Today I'm going to talk about file names, which I know sounds super sexy, but I promise that to be able to stay organized on your projects for decades to come, it's worth taking just a couple minutes now to learn how to do it right. I'm going to share with you the formula I learned working at Remote Control Productions. When you're writing music, the last thing you want to distract you is to lose track of your projects or even to send your client the wrong version of a cue. So we're going to go through the six parts of a strong and clear file name that will keep you organized and on top of your work. I use this formula because I want to be able to see a file on my drive and instantly know what it is. I can't tell you how many times students will send me an MP3 called For Ryan. When I look at my downloads folder, I have no idea what that is. At the very front of your file name goes a project code. This is a shorthand for the name of the film or game or whatever it is you're working on. The project code at the front makes files easy to search for and to group together. And at a glance, you instantly know where it belongs. Keep it as short as you can, but do be careful about reusing the same code. So for Candy Jar, I used CJ. But if someday I score a film called Commander Joe, I just want to remember I already used CJ, but this time I should probably use C Joe instead. Next comes the number, which has three parts. The first number is the reel. This is obviously a relic of the olden days when composers used to work with film. If the editors don't already deliver the film to me in reels, I'll divide it up myself into roughly 20 minute chunks. I just find it easier to remember the difference between 2M7 and 3M1 than 1M18 and 1M19. And also for the procrastinators among us, it's a lot easier to think I'm gonna get reel one finished today instead of I still have this entire film to score. The M stands for music and that's just to separate the real number from the queue number, and then comes the queue number, which is in chronological order. If at some point we decide to add a queue that we hadn't originally planned for, I'll use a letter. For example, if we wanted to add some music between 1M2 and 1M3, I'd call it 1M2A. Next, we have a title, which should be something that at a glance, you instantly know what the queue is. Clever names are great for soundtracks, but the point here is to be organized and efficient, so I think Lona Walks Alone is a stronger title than Rough Day. Next is the version number, and this is my own twist on the formula, and it has two parts. The first number is for the version that goes out the door, and the second number is for internal changes. So I'll explain what that means. Let's say I bounce version 2.0 of a queue, and then I realized I had accidentally muted the reverb. I'll bounce it again, with the reverb as version 2.1, because that way I guarantee I'm not going to mix up the no reverb and reverb files. They just have different names. I'm not trying to overwrite anything. And I wouldn't call it version 3, because the last version the client heard was version 1, and I wouldn't want in the future for us to be trying to go back through different versions and thinking version 2 is missing. So instead, they'll get version 2.1. And then at the end of the file name goes my initials. I only add my initials if there's another composer involved or if it's going to a music library. If I'm the only composer, I'm not gonna put my initials on it. But the idea here is that it should be very easy to trace the file back to me if you need to. Again, if I'm the only composer on the project, I'll leave it out. If you're interested in systems and ways to stay organized, check out this video where I set up a music analysis template in Notion. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.